This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every start, we are born again. Open your heart, spend less time in your head. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience, where we talk to different people that have been through our program, people that volunteer with us. The last few weeks, we've been talking about Ransom Reprogram and the curriculum. So today I'm joined by a pretty awesome dude that I've got to meet over the last few months, um, Johnny Rogers. And um, I appreciate you being here today, Johnny. I appreciate the opportunity just to be here today, Matt. Well, so we're going to talk a little bit about you and kind of where you grew up and and all that. So kind of start with us. I know you told me you grew up in Grand Bay. You had uh, three sisters. One of them passed away and you have one brother. So that's five siblings all together. So tell me what life was like for Johnny when he was a kid. Uh, First of all, life uh, for me was, I almost say somewhat adventurous. Um, I was a second of five children from my mother and my older sister, um, she passed away about 20, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, but uh, uh, growing up, we uh, it was always uh, adventurous. We, we always would have uh, something to do. Uh, Mom made sure that we uh, stayed busy some type of way, whether it was just making mud cakes or <laughs> uh, learning how to do uh, some simple chores and stuff. And she also, at an early age, instilled in us, uh, you know, the value of having a, a relationship with God. So uh, I, my young childhood was very adventurous. Um, it's just I had three other siblings that were younger than me, and being the oldest uh, male sibling, uh, it kind of left me with a somewhat of a responsibility to look after your little sisters and your little brothers. So you grew up taking care of them, kind of keep it. So you say adventurous, so but you had a pretty good childhood. Your parents actually taught faith to you, um, took you to church. So then you, when you became a teenager, kind of where did your life lead to then? Um, growing up, uh, I didn't. My, my father. Uh, was absent. I think he's 
him and my mom was together till like I got four years old. Then I had um, uh, another man came into our lives, which was my stepfather. Uh, but um, you know, my mom she she did teach those things to us. And um, as a teenager, uh, I began to, as you would say, start to find my own way. So some of the things that I was taught, I kind of, uh, I would say, rebelled against them. Um, I started uh, sipping, me and my cousin, trying to get a little wine. We even uh, it, uh, smoked marijuana uh, when we could get it. And my older cousin, they was that was around in the community, they wasn't, wasn't real good role models, but, um, you know, they they would teach us some of the things that we would need to know as uh, being a young man, uh, maybe in the night, not in the right manner, but they still, you know, showed us the ins and outs of it. So as a teen, um, you know, uh, starting middle school, high school, um, it was, um, I would say, pretty much normal. I didn't play a lot of sports, and the ones that I did, um, I was only uh, a part of them because I wanted to be a chick magnet. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, and, and school was uh, sort of a downer for, for me because um, it didn't really challenge me. Uh, I felt like it didn't really challenge me, so a lot of stuff that I learned, I pretty much learned it on my own. I just went to school because I had to. Yeah. And I know that as I got, as I met you, you're, you're like a whiz when it comes to numbers. I can like, I give you a list and you can add them up really, really quick. I won't put you on the spot on here to do that. Thank you. Me. But, um, <laughs> so you're 51 years old. Yes, sir. Um, you, your cousins kind of showed you life, um, Maybe not always the best life, yeah. but they showed you the way around. <laughs> um, so then you, I know you joined the military. Yes, sir. United what, States Navy. You're in the Navy. So tell me a little bit about that. What drove you to the military? I dropped out of school at uh, the 10th grade. Okay. Um, like I said, because of uh, <laughs> the guidance that I had as a young teen with my cousins, uh, no real father figure that I had to learn how to do a lot of stuff by myself. I didn't have an older brother, uh, so my cousin was really like my older brother. And um, several of those were, um, they went into the Navy. I had some in the Army. I even had one in the Air Force, I know, and even my uncle. So that was uh, something that I wanted to pursue. And then, um, as uh, I got a little older, and met my my now wife, um, Mavis. We talked about it, and and the military was an option that I wanted to take. So I went over to Bishop, got my GED, uh, worked at a seafood house, and I said, "Well, this is not it. I need to do something." And I ended up joining the United States Navy, and I passed a. Uh, ASVAB test with a pretty high score where I could have just about went into anything except for nuclear science. Uh -huh. uh, and so I I decided to go in as a stock and inventory specialist. So that's where your numbers came in handy, knowing numbers, keeping up with numbers. And so you did that for a while. So what was it like in the Navy? Was it what you thought it would be? Um, No, they, they, they kind of sold me a dream. Um, uh, and it was somewhat true, but you know, half of the truth is not really true. So uh, I went in, you know, 18, 19 years old, uh, young kid from a um, small town in Alabama. And when I went in, I, I, I was under the assumption that, uh, you know, I was gonna be able to, uh, see the world, work, and try to establish a, a career there and, you know, take care of my family. Um, I got in after a while, I uh, went to school, got underway, 
boot camp, um, all those. And when I got on the ship, my first ship, I had to fly from Mobile uh, to Atlanta, Atlanta to New York, New York to one part of Germany, another flight from one part of Germany to another part, and then I had to take a, a some type of train. Um, and all the traveling took me about 30 hours. Hmm. And really the only thing I knew was the name of the ship. They didn't really give me, uh, I don't feel like they gave me the adequate uh, instructions of where I needed to go. But so when I got to the ship, um, it was a, it was a, it blowed me because I walked upon the ship, walked on the ship, and the first guy that I met on there, he uh, actually cursed me out. <laughs> and come to find out, he was the guy that was supposed to be showing me around in my division. So that didn't set good. Uh, I got on the ship, and then the captain come down in civilian clothes, and he hollered at me. And I was already upset at the other guy, so I kind of had a rebuttal which I eventually paid for. Uh, but, you know, that was the beginning of the career. I did excel in my uh, specialty. Um, I went from just stacking boxes to having 10 warehouses on the ship. I had a budget of uh, that I kept with requisitions for over $3.7 million that I kept kept a very accurate inventory and count on all the stuff and you know I, I learned my craft real well um, but trouble came <laughs> so um, as we were traveling I ran into some more guys and uh, you know I'm 19 20 years old and these guys are a little bit older some from New York some from out in California and they are uh, they took the country, boy, and they just showed him a whole lot of different things. Uh -huh. So the, the career in the Navy was uh, bittersweet. And, and, you know, I a lot of times I longed that, that for those days where I wish I could have went and changed some things. But, um, you know, it wasn't a part of my purpose on my plan. That's right. So you were in, in the Navy. I know you got in trouble in the Navy. You got some things happen. You did some time, right? Yes. So what was that like? Um, after I got out the Navy, um, well, while in the Navy, I started um, uh, selling and using um, uh, controlled substance and, and marijuana uh, again. And um, after I got out, I kind of got into that for – a minute and it eventually eventually I started to, um, to 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 use more than I was selling and that started a, a, a downward spiral in my life uh, with the use of cocaine um, that uh, cost me a lot of things but most of all it cost me um, some time that I'll never ever be able to give back and that's when I got incarcerated. I uh, committed a crime in 2010 uh -huh. uh, in Moss Point, Mississippi. I ended up going to prison in Mississippi in November of 2010 and um, I served two years and three months in the Mississippi State uh, Department of Correction. Um, also, while I was out before I went to Mississippi, I also caught another charge in uh, Mobile, Mobile County, uh, which I had to serve five years. Um, so in all, I did a total of seven years and three, maybe four months of incarceration in, uh, in an eight-year period. So, you know, it's funny because, like, I've met you and now I know you and you and I met some through weird circumstances. But now I look back at you and I'm like, I can never see you doing those things because you're a very 
um, compassionate guy. You've um, even tear up sometimes. And <laughs> and, I, and one thing you said there is that those are years you can never get back. But you're right. When you go to prison or you go through addiction or whatever, you can't get those years back. But you also can't change them. And I think you realize that and because a lot of times people that go through our program or any program – they can't forgive themselves more than anything. You know, the people I've met your wife, Ma Mavis, and she, that's a phenomenal woman to put up with you for this long, 30 some years, right? How long? Have you been? 30, 33, yeah. 33 years. Yeah, I've been dealing with her for 33 years. <laughs> yeah. Dealing with her. I think she's been <laughs> dealing with you because she put up, she was there for you through all the thick and thin, everything you've been through. I'm sure she's not perfect as well, but, um, you you put her through a lot during that time, but she still loves you. She still cares. And I believe that's because of who you are. She also sees what we see, and that is a compassionate, kind, um, good worker, wants to keep doing right for his family, will supply the, whatever his family needs during that time. So then you and I met um, three months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so tell me a little bit about our first meeting, kind of what was that like? Um, the circumstances to, uh, should I go into those? You can't. Circumstances, uh, to our first meeting, I had a job with a very well, uh, recognized company. Good job. Um, good people to work for. And, um, I allowed, because I thought I can handle, I allowed my addiction to stick his ugly head back out, and I've got I got caught up in a situation um, where um, I had to. I, I, there was no choice; I had to leave. And uh, well, I really got fired. But um, the good people at at my former place of employment, uh, one of them, no Mister Mister Matt, and uh, I was referred to Mister Matt. In fact, a lot of them know Mr. Matt, and they say, well, this guy can help you. Say so he can help you. And uh, so I have uh, I picked up the telephone, and I called that day, and we set up a meeting. I think it was for the following Monday. Following Monday. That was a Thursday. I set up a week. Uh, we set up a meeting for that Monday, um, and um, – that's when I began uh, this journey at Ransom um, Reprogram, Ransom Ministries. Um, one thing that I I, I do remember uh, about our first meeting was you said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I may hurt your feelings at times, but I'm going to be honest with you. And um, I told my wife, and I tell everybody else, I say, that's what I really love about you uh, and the program that, you know, it speaks directly to you. It don't speak to the man or the other situation. Uh, what's going on with someone else? It speaks, and you speak directly to you. Um, he also said this for all of y'all that may have never met him or known. He said, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to annoy you sometime. I might just come up and ask you, how you doing? How you doing? Well, he did that to me. It didn't annoy me, but I was like, I, I asked my wife, so I wonder why he keep asking me that. Then I said, you know what? He said he was going to do that. But um, through Ransom, uh, I've allowed, I've been, I've been allowed uh, to interact with other people. And I also see where I have um, took it upon myself to try to correct some former wrongs that I had in my life, and there's nothing that I can do about them. As Matt said er earlier, you know, you can't change what already happened. Only thing that we can change is what's going to happen next. Uh, uh, the decision ultimately laid in my hand, and he, had, he, he showed me that. He said, we're going to work on what it is that bothers you, that, 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 that makes you go back. And um, that's what it was. I was always trying to say, well, I could have done this better that time. And then I, what I, run, I realized is that nothing behind me is going to make me move forward. 
So in order for me to move forward, I need to keep looking forward. Uh, I can uh, remember the things, but I don't need to reminisce on them. I don't need to dwell on them. I need to move forward. And uh, the fact that uh, it was a uh, religious-based program really helped me because I really do love the Lord. I really do worship and it's just the the whole setting uh, of this program and this um, ministry. It just helped me to to grow more and more. Well, I know that you know that first meeting. I I did tell you that, and we've we've had some good times through this. And I put you in some positions that you didn't really like. And when I told you why, <laughs> you understood. I think maybe didn't like it when I first told you, but. But I think what I've seen you grow, and again, like we told you, I said, we've got to figure out what makes you go back mm -hmm. and fall back. Because you would fall back like years. You'd yeah. go years, and then all of a sudden. So mm -hmm. I think this is a, um, it's a good thing because I think I realized, you realized, is that, yes, we cannot change what we've done. We can only change what we can do in the future. Yes, we can't let others or ourselves hold our past against us. Mm -hmm. And I think you're doing, a, you're doing a phenomenal job. So you graduated yesterday. Yes, sir. Your wife was here. Yes. Even that former employer came, yes. which I thought was pretty awesome. Yes, yes. What a beautiful, pleasant surprise. <laughs> so they really care about you, and she, it broke her heart, I know that, to to have to let you go at that time. But I think – there's still that family love and sometimes our family has to do tough things for us. But I think yes. one thing that I've seen in you is just that humble heart, that willingness to learn, be coachable. Um, you know, a lot of things you you've worked a lot of places. You're very good at what you do. And um, so now we were, you're going to go over into staffing for me for a little while and see how that works out. I love, I love our staffing part of this because it gives you an opportunity to go kind of look at this job and see if that's really what you want to do. It gives them a chance to look at you and see if it's a good fit. And I think, you know, wherever you go, you're going to be successful. I believe you're a leader. I believe you want to be a leader. Yes. Um, and I believe that, that people will see that in you and they're going to take that and run with it, no matter where it is. If it's with merchants over here running forklifts and working for them, maybe running one of their warehouses eventually, or if it's with someone else, you know, we're always going to be family. Yeah. I'll always be here to help you move to that next, whatever you want to do. Um, the biggest thing is, is communication that we're going to communicate with each other. And um, I'm just honored that I got to meet you over the last 90 days. And I look forward to what God's going to do in our relationship along the way. Um, I tell people all the time, um, especially out here in the listen to podcasts that, I'm blessed to get to do what I do because I get to meet people that I normally would never meet. And they're some of the most blessed blessing, the biggest blessings to me. Um, and so it's been an honor to watch you grow. One thing I will say is that, dude, you don't let nothing get in your way of work. I mean, th this man, people out there <laughs> had got his hand surgery on his hand and not probably what, two days later, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway, he was mowing my grass a certain time. Maybe not two days later. But anyway, I, I got on to him, by the way, and told him not to do that. Um, but I think I just saw somebody that was dedicated and ready to just do what he's do what he's called to do, you know. And I, I do see the joy of the Lord in you. Yeah, exactly. And I think next time the opportunity arises for you to um, – maybe fall back because it will there'll be opportunities but i think hopefully you'll see my big ugly face <laughs> and you'll decide that you don't want to uh do that yes 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 i i don't know where to start first of all i want to thank you for allowing me uh to even take part of uh, uh this this program this ministry and uh i want to thank you for all the honesty uh you are definitely a man of integrity and uh, a man of your words. So we are, uh, the, the pleasure has been more of mine than it has, I believe so, because um, my wife will tell you I talk talk about you just about all the time. And if I talk about somebody a lot, it means that I really like them. Um, but what I have, uh, what I have learned that even here, that we, we all make up a, one big family. Some of us are closer than others. 
even with uh, the guys and young young lady that I graduated with, we 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 bonded in a way that we, you know, we never probably thought that we would with a complete stranger that we met. And um, it's just been a joy uh, to be a part of his uh, his ministry for the last uh, ninety days. Uh, shout out to Mr. Bill. <laughs> Keep your head up, and um, I just, I just, you know, I just thank the Lord for the opportunity. Um, um, you know, I, I would, I would gladly, uh, joyfully uh, come back and uh, help in any way that I can. I ain't gone away yet, so I'll be here. But uh, we. Uh, I think that this is uh, an opportunity. Uh, I'm not gonna say a, a, the 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 stumble that I had but it's an opportunity for me to to grow more uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, uh, and, and 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 socially. Uh, you know, the financial and all the other stuff it'll come as we go. But I just I just I think that I really needed that, and that's what I got here at this program with meeting uh, great people like you, Mr. Bill, uh, Ethan, Brian, and uh, Mr. John, Blake, Miss Grizzell, what's the other, Miss Sandra, um, what's the other lady? Uh, I can't think of a name. Kathy. Kathy. Yes, Miss Kathy. Um, so many others uh, we've met. I just, I just really. It's been a, a a joy of a ride, and I I just thank you for for the opportunity to even get a chance to meet him. Well, it's been an honor. The honor's ours, and I'm, I'm I know that we'll always be friends, and I will call you back to come share mm -hmm. with some of our guys. You'd be a great mentor for some of them coming through. Um, but so I appreciate everybody joining us today. I appreciate you joining us and being on here. If you want to listen to our other episodes, you can go to wherever you get your podcast and you can listen there. Please rate us, subscribe to our podcast. Also, give us um, give us an email. Send us an email to info at ransomministries.com. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to hear on our podcast. Also, go all our social media. We're on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. We appreciate you joining us. We appreciate you supporting us. And if you want to learn more about us too, go to ransomministries.com and you can check out our website, um, how you can get involved. And we appreciate it. And until next week, y'all have a good day. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight With every star